This is Greenland, the world's largest island, and one of the most mysterious. Stretching over 772,000 square miles, it's bigger than Germany, France, Spain, the UK, and Italy combined. Yet, fewer than 60,000 people live here. Most of them are concentrated in small towns along the ice-free southwestern coastline, near the capital, Nuuk. What makes Greenland truly unique is that around 80% of its surface is buried beneath a thick sheet of ice. The kind of ice so massive, it holds enough water to raise global sea levels by 20 feet if it ever melted completely. So it's no surprise that Greenland has long remained isolated, both geographically and economically. Although it's physically part of North America, Greenland's political history is tied to Europe, specifically Denmark. For about 300 years, Denmark ruled over Greenland as a colonial territory, even though it's nearly 1,900 miles away. It wasn't until the mid-20th century that Greenland began stepping out of that colonial shadow. For most of its modern history, Greenland's economy has depended heavily on fishing. Today, seafood products still make up over 90% of its exports. But a new chapter may be on the horizon, one where Greenland's frozen depths could become a treasure trove of global importance. As climate change accelerates ice melt, vast mineral deposits, long locked beneath the surface, are becoming more accessible. Greenland's allure isn't new. The United States, in particular, has been interested in the island for a long time. During World War II, after Nazi Germany occupied Denmark, the U.S. quickly moved into Greenland and established military outposts. When the war ended, American troops didn't leave. One of those bases, Patufik Space Base, formerly Thule Air Base, has remained operational since 1943. It's now one of the most strategically important military installations in the Arctic. In 1951, a formal defense agreement between Denmark and the U.S. gave Washington broad access to Greenland's territory for defense purposes. And with potential missile routes from Russia crossing right over the island, Greenland has become a frontline post in any hypothetical nuclear scenario. The U.S. has tried, more than once, to outright buy Greenland. It first happened in 1867, shortly after the U.S. acquired Alaska from Russia. Washington made an offer, but Denmark declined. In 1946, the U.S. tried again, this time putting $100 million on the table. Again, Denmark said no. Most recently, during his presidency, Donald Trump proposed purchasing the island, and even today, he occasionally revisits the idea. While the idea of buying Greenland may sound absurd to some, there's real reasoning behind it, especially when you look at what lies beneath the ice. One of the biggest points of interest is located in southern Greenland, the Kvainfeld deposit. It's considered one of the world's largest untapped reserves of rare earth elements and uranium. These rare earths, like neodymium, praseodymium, and terbium, are essential for clean energy technologies, such as wind turbines and electric vehicle motors. Without them, the global energy transition simply doesn't happen. Experts estimate that developing the Kvainfeld mine could cost around $7.5 billion. But the potential payoff is enormous, especially in a world scrambling for the raw materials needed for electric vehicles, solar panels, and battery storage. Even though the deposit has an operator, Australia's energy transition minerals, actual mining has yet to begin, and Kvainfeld is just the beginning. Detailed mapping of Greenland's geology has been ongoing for over a century, and the findings are staggering. The island is home to an array of valuable mineral resources. Beyond rare earths, there are deposits of gold, platinum, copper, zinc, iron, nickel, cobalt, and graphite. Many of these are classified as critical minerals, meaning they're essential for modern economies, but hard to find elsewhere. A 2023 study from the Geological Survey of Denmark and Greenland concluded that the retreating ice sheet will likely uncover even more deposits in the years to come. In fact, Greenland may contain 31 out of the 34 critical minerals identified by the European Union, including lithium and titanium. The Southern Gardar province hosts three of the most promising rare earth deposits. Meanwhile, underexplored regions in the northeast and central part of the island are thought to contain significant amounts of gold and other metals. For example, gold-rich zones have been identified near the Sermilagak Fjord in southeastern Greenland. And yet, despite all of this mineral wealth, only one commercial mine is currently active in Greenland. White Mountain, which produces a northosite, a type of mineral used in paint and fiberglass. That's it. Why so little development? The short answer, politics, geography, and risk. Building a mine isn't like building a house. It's a long, expensive, and complicated process that requires multinational cooperation, environmental assessments, legal clearances, infrastructure development, and above all stability. 
and stability is something Greenland hasn't always offered. Greenland's mineral rights have belonged to its own government, not Denmark's, since 2009, when it was granted self-rule. The island's elected leaders hold full control over what lies beneath the ground. During the early 2010s, Greenland's government actively welcomed interest from foreign mining companies, including Chinese firms. At one point, China's Shunghe Resources even acquired a large stake in the Australian company that controls Kveinfeld. That raised red flags. Governments in Denmark, the EU, and the US began expressing concerns over China's growing influence in the rare earths market. With China already dominating global supply chains, another foothold in Greenland could give Beijing enormous leverage. In 2021, Greenland held a snap election, and the new government quickly banned uranium mining and halted all new oil and gas exploration. The decision was based on environmental and climate concerns. Greenland's Minister of Natural Resources, Nadja Nathanielsen, explained that the risks of fossil fuel development far outweighed the potential financial rewards. The decision had consequences. Mining companies, worried about regulatory reversals, began to pull back. Some feared that the political climate was simply too unpredictable. Energy Transition Minerals, whose plans for Kveinfeld were frozen, eventually filed a lawsuit against Greenland's government. They demanded the right to move forward, or compensation of up to $11.5 billion. That figure is almost 10 times Greenland's annual budget. Despite these challenges, Greenland's resources are still very much in play. In fact, back in 2019, the Trump administration signed an agreement with Greenland to strengthen cooperation on mining. While that didn't lead to a mining boom, it did set the stage for potential future investments. Legally, there's nothing stopping American companies from getting involved. Yet, as of early 2025, only one U.S.-based firm holds an exploration license in Greenland. By contrast, companies from Canada and the U.K. hold a combined 28 licenses. As of now, Greenland has issued permits for 100 different blocks of land across the island, each one potentially rich in minerals. But exploration is just the first step. Turning these blocks into functioning mines takes years, if not decades. It's not just a matter of money. It's also a matter of capability. Few companies have the expertise, equipment, and patience to operate in Greenland's harsh, remote terrain. It's one of the most logistically challenging places on Earth to build anything, let alone a mine. Still, the global demand for critical minerals is only going in one direction, up. According to industry projections, demand for key minerals could quadruple by 2040, driven largely by the push toward clean energy and the rise of electric vehicles. In that context, Greenland could become a crucial player not just because of what has, but because of what the world needs. A 2023 Economist report noted that Greenland has deposits of 43 out of the 50 critical minerals the global economy depends on. The numbers vary slightly depending on the source. But the message is clear. The world desperately needs what Greenland has in abundance. Whether Greenland will embrace that role, or continue to prioritize environmental preservation over resource extraction, is a question only its people can answer. One thing is certain. Beneath the frozen surface of this ancient island lies a battleground of geopolitics, climate policy, and the future of energy itself.